Hello, welcome back. I hope you're very well. I'm doing a book review today for The Third Chimpanzee by Jared Diamond. This is quite an old book now. This was first published in 1991, but um, I'm very interested in the evolution of the human race. I'm very attracted to these kinds of books. And this one's been on my radar for quite a while now, and I finally got around to reading it. Um, the reason for the title is explained in the first chapter. Human beings, Homo sapiens, actually differ from chimpanzees by just 1.6% of our DNA, which is a tiny, tiny amount. And what's more, a certain amount of that 1.6% is actually junk DNA. So the real figure is actually less than one6 and bearing that in mind, it could be said that Homo sapiens is therefore uh, the third chimpanzee. In case you don't know, there, there are two other chimpanzee types. There's the, the common chimpanzee that most of you will know. And there's another chimpanzee called the, the Bonobo chimpanzee. And we differ just by 1.6%. So um, by this definition, we could, we could be classed as another kind of chimpanzee, the third chimpanzee, okay? And, wow, this book is packed full of information. It is quite a read, quite an intense read. I would describe it as semi-accessible. I think it was written for the kind of lay person. Uh, it does get technical, but it's, it's readable. And I just want to discuss three main things that I've learned from this book. Uh, there are loads of things that I, that I learned, but I've, I'm just narrowing it down to three. Uh, number one, we unconsciously select spouses and romantic partners by certain criteria that you would never guess. Um, we, we subconsciously choose our partners based on the length of their earlobes believe it or not. Uh, there was a massive study done by, by loads and loads of married couples in, in Europe, I think, and they measured certain parts of their bodies and they did all these tests and it, it turns out that earlobe length is, is like matches between partners. It's incredible. Uh, also, middle finger length plays a part. You, you subconsciously choose your wife or husband based on, on the length of their middle finger and also eye width as well. If, if somebody's eyes are further apart than yours or closer together, you probably won't be attracted to them. That kind of blew me away. That's number one. Number two. Ah, right. Women live longer than men. I knew that already, but I didn't know why. But I learnt why in this book. This, this is quite tricky. Um, generally speaking, an animal or an organism, um, if, if an organism is likely to die in an accident, if, if, if its life is quite risky, its body will put less energy into internal repair than it will in reproductive energy. Our bodies repair, repair themselves all the time. Our internal organs get repaired, cells get replaced. But that, that's very costly for our bodies. More, um, more of our energy gets put towards um, reproduction and stuff like that as well. If an animal lives a risky life, less of its body's energy will get put towards internal repair, okay? Now, within species, that also holds true. Who's more likely to die in a fight or an accident? A man or a woman? A man. A man is more likely to have a fight and die in a fight, and a man is more likely to die in an accident. So therefore, less of our energy gets put towards internal repair and organ repair. Women have more of that stuff, and that's why women live longer. I learned that in this book. Fascinating stuff. Number three is a quick one. Um, it's often thought that 
we are separated from the animals by art. Art is exclusive to Homo sapiens. That's what makes us kind of loftier. But in actual fact, art is not exclusive to humans at all. Animals create art. Not all of them, but some of them. The most notable exception, uh, the most notable example, sorry, is the bowerbird. A bowerbird, uh, the male bowerbird, creates, builds a nice house, a nice nest, and then he spends loads and loads of time decorating it with, with different coloured objects. And he actually arranges the, the colours separately, puts the blue stuff here, the red stuff there, and, it, and it's art, and it's done for a purpose as well. Another point in this book is that art is done for a purpose. It's not just done to, just for the aesthetic uh, quality. It's done, it's done to gain power and, and to gain things, uh, generally speaking. Um, that's another thing I learned in this book. So it's a very good read. Um, I wouldn't actually recommend this book to most people unless you're really, really into anthropology or you're really into evolution. It's very in-depth, quite technical in parts. Um, you, you, you will enjoy it if you're really into this topic. Um, I will say as well that the end chapters did drag a bit. The end chapters discuss uh, genocide and global warming to a certain extent and he did kind of go on and on a bit. His, his prose got a bit tiring and he, and he kind of dribbled on a bit. So it, I did have to push myself to get through this one, but uh, if you're into this topic, it's, it's, I'd say it's probably recommended reading if you're seriously into this topic, even though it is a bit dated now. Um, and that's it, I just wanted to discuss these three main points. Uh, please don't forget, I have a range of books on Amazon uh, that I've published. I've left a link for these books below. I'll see you in about two weeks' time with another book review. In the meantime, try to have a great day on this chimpanzee-infested rock we call Earth. Take care. Goodbye.